everyone, it's Christine here. So this is part two of this tutorial. Um, so I'm just going to continue with this. I've picked out um, papers. Um, I'm going to use the Wandering Ivy, which is um, Kayser Craft pad. Um, the papers are gorgeous. Um, so firstly, before I ended the last video, um, part one, um, I said I was going to ink everything um, off camera. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, and I've chose out this for my cover. So I'll put that on. I'm going to do a whole piece this time, only because my spine is really quite delicate um, because it's an old um, suspension file. This has been... This one here has been um, used quite a bit um, in its use, so it's made that spine a bit, bit weak to where I've actually scored for the spine. So hopefully this will make it a little bit more stronger. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And... But I won't do that yet. Um, I'm thinking I will put in the signatures um, first, um, which are like this. So I've gone ahead and picked out papers for the signatures. So I'll just get all the papers together because the, the pack is absolutely gorgeous. And I've also gone ahead and cut out um, placements for the papers so that's how I'm going to do that at this stage and then these are the two journals so I tea dyed some blue paper and it's come out like really nice so I'm liking that look so I've got some more to put in there in that one so we'll do that together so, um, and just the other pages that come in this set, I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. Got your blues and greens, but I'm sort of trying to stick to mostly the greens, only because this is quite an olive and vintage sort of looking green. Yeah, that's a really beautiful set. So what I might do first is I'll just um, stick these in and how I um, did it was I've just, where the score lines are, I've just, um, <coughs> excuse me, Um, what I had a bigger paper and I virtually all I did was um, cut them all down to just below eight um, just so it gives you a bit of a border and then I went across to the score lines and I just penciled in how big I'd want it making sure I didn't go on those score lines so we can do that so I'm going to port here and just ink there So that's 
done. Sorry, you could probably just hear my my dog Basil walking around there. Now we didn't um, put the final strip of um, double sided tape on this because I wanted to put the backing in and then put it down like that. So as you lift it up, you see the, the paper all the way down so it looks so much nicer. So I'll just do that now. And as I said before, like I use a combination of glue and um, double-sided tape. Just glued down Oops. this section here as you can see so when you lift it up at least you can see the nice pattern all the way down and I didn't worry about inking down the bottom here because that's going to be covered up there anyway. So now we've done that. Um, one thing I did realise too is I've done, um, I've put these on before putting the designer paper in. You can take them off, um, but I'm actually going to leave mine like that. I've, I've got an idea to put something like a little embellishment here. But you can, before you um, put that paper on, um, you can take it off. You can actually peel that paper off and redo it. So put your paper on and, and do that. So it's just something that you can do before you put the, this little closure on. Actually, before I even do that, I'll do this. <laughs> And this will finish this little pocket off. Okay. I actually love this colour. So vintage. This one here so again all I did was I got the big piece of paper and put it up to where I wanted it positioned on that score line and marked on the inside of this score line and cut that down and I did it for this one as well <coughs> excuse me so that's gonna be a pocket as well So you can make it any combination of what you'd like. Once you've got the base, um, it's a bit easy. Okay. So I might just ink that a bit more down the bottom. So I haven't done like the wings on these pockets um, which fold in like a hinge. Um, I normally do but I haven't done that on this one. So depending on what you like. But it wasn't a pocket that I wanted 
to put a lot in. I wanted it be quite just for a specific. Just for a specific journal card. Okay. And this one, instead of the three pockets, I'm just going to do a side pocket. And I'm not sure whether I wanted to do it with the side pocket in or out. I think I'll do it out. And I'll just glue that down. Now, if you're having uh, dif difficulties with the measurements, um, you can measure in, like for the base of the book, you can measure in one side and then turn it around on your scoreboard and measure in on the other side because I have noticed that I'm a little bit out um, on this side so it's easier and it just means you make the spine a little bit smaller. But um, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But all our projects are bespoke, so um, and being handmade, and so it looks all good. <laughs> um, now, what I might do is put in. Put in the do the journals. So this one I've got ready. So I just want to curve these corners. I've just got it on number 10 here, 10 mil. one's ready so now I'll just work with this one just move these out of the way so I can bring the cutter in so I really like the way that this blue paper so this is just plain blue copy paper and then I've tea dyed it and it's just come out fabulous so I just make sure that the size is correct and what I'll do first is I'll do the main I just I don't want it right along the edge of the journal I want it sort of down a bit. And then I just um, bring it in the same as this one. Okay, so I want to cut it down there. So I'll just make sure that I get this all. So 
So this you can make use for other things. So that's going to be handy. So, yep, that fits in well. So I'm just going to do the height of it now. So I like that. I like that. And I'm just going to bring it down to about the same as that there. So I've got that sort of similar gap on the bottom as what I have on the top. And just make sure that you've got all your papers together and then just give that a cut as well. And these, keep these, these are in handy. You can do a little bit of a, a crinkle like that. I think they're called paper ruffles or something like that. And then sew down the middle, so they're handy. Okay, so I'm just going to now just fold them up individually just, just so that they get a tight score line in the middle. So I'll just show you how I did um, these. So this is a full 12 by 12 across and I just cut it down to just below eight because the this um, booklet is eight. So you can see that I've got a bit of green above and below showing of the journal. And then I just fold it in. So I just measured, um, I think it's about three and a half. Where's my ruler? Three and three quarters. So what I did with the 12 by 12, I folded it in half. And then um, I measured three and three quarters and then folded that in. So that becomes that little tuck spot there. Now... Let's sew these in. I'll sew one in and then I, because I want that one there and this one here. So I'll sew one in and then I'll do the other one off camera so you don't need to watch it all. So it's about two and a half. You just need to make sure that you get that all. Actually, before I do that, I do want to curve. Curve those. Again, I've got it on that 10. And when you put it in, you just make sure that you've got your equal room top and bottom. I 
I saw in one video these super duper paper clips. They were absolutely amazing. I don't know, it was on um, uh, Roxy's Creations, Rachel's channel, and yeah, they were like came down the page. That, that would be so good to have four of those when you're working doing booklets like this. So one thing you have to do, remind yourself, is to check the way the pattern is. Um, these are both sort of multiple, like multiple patterns all over, so it doesn't go in any direction. So now <clears throat> I just line that up. So I want to go in about a quarter of an inch. This is just to guide me. Okay. Now I'll get the, the amount of green I want showing at the bottom and at the top. I'm just going to eyeball this um, you can come in about an inch down um, whatever you feel so I want it there so I want a hole there got that about center already So I've just put the holes in. So now just eyeballing it, but you do have to be precise. <laughs> But what you can do is the measurement you've got here, you can measure down inside your um, journal. Okay. Just make sure I go right down to the end of the poker where it's wider. And do the same here. That cardboard, that board is actually quite thin. So once I get these on and get the cover on, it will be so much better. Oh, I've already got that. I do apologise if you can hear my stomach at the moment. I'm actually quite hungry. So you go in the middle. Go in there. Pull it all tight when you get it all done. Can be a bit fiddly. Go straight up to the top. And 
through that one. And then down through the middle. Using quite a, a thick thread. Now I want to pull now I can go through here. And you just make sure you've got one thread on either side. So now I need to go through and tighten. Just check this front bit here. So that's what it's going to look like. And just tie that off. So you can do a bow if you wish. I think I might just do that. I have enough. Okay, so that's that one done. done and then all I do is put a bit of glue along here and down here close that off that's your tuck spot The same on this side, down here, okay, so that's that one done. So I'll get this one done and I'll add that in. But I'll do that off camera so you don't need to watch that process again. So I went ahead and I've attached this other journal. So I'm just going to round those corners around the page corners as well. Just give that a bit of an ink. And glue those down. Okay, so that's both the journals in now. Oops. Need to hold that down. So I went ahead and put this panel in as well. And I've got this panel to do now.
I used to be really good at gluing, like I could, in my younger days that was, I could get straight lines, but I definitely can't get straight lines now. I added this as my little embellishment isn't it gorgeous so I played around with um, paper and I ended up making this little envelope um, and then I thought this blue paper would be good and then I've just put in this little bit of a little paper that can be journaled on and just sit in there that looks really cute. So you can add other things like that. So it is purely just a square um, of paper. <coughs> and let's see, that's not quite. Maybe I'll put one down here. be something that stands out I do it in this actually no rules you can do anything it's just a square. Um, so, and then what do I want as the front? So then I just use this um, as my template. Put that in like that. Down, so it gave that flat look. Then I just took that template out and just scored. Looks really good. And then I did... Seven mil on corner round on this, and I'm just going to ink this before I glue it down because it's actually harder to get those inside flaps. glue this inside flat down first. This little triangle because that doesn't need to touch anything.
just got to work out where this main area is going to touch because you don't want to glue where you want to get into the envelope. Just need to put a bit of pressure on it. Get that attached. And then just ink around the edges. something wide. Now do four mil. Probably a bit sidetracked at the moment because this is something that you can do um, in your own time. But I just love that how it turned out. And then you can do four. What I might do is just get my pin. I'm definitely way I'm definitely sidetracked now. So I don't want it to come all the way back, but I need to take that needle back. So then I've got that loop. It's really cute. And then I can glue this. Okay, he can go like that. Okay, I really need to get onto the front cover. anything else can be done at another time so you've got pocket there pocket there so you can make 
journal cards. So um, what I would do, which I did in this one, is get some of the paper and just back it with tea dyed 160 GSM paper. It's nearly like card, but a lot thinner. It just gives it that strength to get down into the pocket and see how much smaller I've made that card just so it goes down smoothly. Because with this style pocket, the closer you get to the edge, it gets really tight. So you're better off making it a bit thinner and then you can get it in. So that worked out well. And you can put pockets here. But I'm just going to work on this front piece now. So I want, I chose out some seam binding and I've just gone for a really neutral colour. Now I've only put glue where just sort of, it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be in line. Um, with the actual material because I'm going to be putting the cover over top of it so it doesn't matter that there's glue everywhere. go over top like that and I've actually done all the tape I've used half <coughs> excuse me half inch tape so just to help me to control it all and I've also scored you can't see but I've actually scored where the score lines of the spine are there. So I've just put pencil marks there and then I scored that just so that I can fold that. So all I do is pull up a little bit, then I can position it. So I'll position it first like this. Just making sure those score lines were in the position. Now press that corner down because that's what I've lifted. And I can just press that down as I go. Now what I might do. Just want to work before I... You might not have to do this. I had to do it this way purely because of how weak my spine is. So um, this is purely because of my... my weak cardboard because this is such an old file it's been used so well and it's had that that um, this score line has been there for however old this file is many years old so now that I've done that I just want to go ahead and take all this tape off Use 
use this section just to lift it up. This wider tape is so sticky. I get stuck to it all the time. Just go ahead and see if I can loosen all those up and then I can pull a couple off at a time then. So many ways you can decorate this and so many little things, little elements that you can add to the journal. I'll just take this last one off now. It's great, great project. So I'm just going to bend that a bit so that I can get that spine down first. And that's covered that my tie nicely as well. So I might later just go a little bit darker along there. Yeah, that's turned out really nice. So let's close this up. Yeah, so that's how it comes out. So you can put pockets here. They're the journals. So the two journals. So I can put a bit of strip there because it really is a little bit um, different. Something. this paper is yeah, I'll put that in there mm, not sure anyway I can do that later yep so you've got this open up so again you can put designer paper on the very top there if you wish but you've got the basics now so you can make heaps of these and they're great for gifts I reckon and you could even, um, even in the centre here, which is a great idea. Um, don't think I've got. Just thinking like you can actually add a pen in there. So that's another idea. You could add a little bit of um, elastic before putting the cover on or... Um, even add one that's got a clip and it can be like that as long as it's not too sticking up like that there are designs that you can get where it fits right nicely down so so you've got that maybe a thinner pen there's lots of pens out there so you'll be able to get some good ideas for that and then that's a great gift to give someone you can fill these up with I'll just get some of these tags you 
can fill these up with tags and get bigger ones. So, yeah, that's turned out really, really nice. I love that paper. And it's recycled and old. That spine feels really good now. And it's recycled and old um, suspension file. So it's nice. That's, that's really strong, that spine, now that I've done it that way. Good press down in there. down as well yeah I really like that that's come out really nicely so I might um, actually finish that off off camera and I'll do a complete flip through of this one when it's done so I'll add a few more embellishments and tags and um, do a flip through, flip through. So I hope you enjoyed that um, tutorial. I hope you got enough from it that you can make your own and um, have fun with it and make it into such a beautiful gift um, by adding a pen and um, even personalising it with, you know, a person's name on it. So, yeah, that would be really, really beautiful. You can even get pens that you can add a person's name to it so it really personalizes the whole gift so anyway thank you so much for watching and I hope you um, got a lot out of that and um, I'll see you again soon on my next video thank you bye